talking now. So, over to Eileen. Thanks, Eileen. Hello. Hello and welcome, everybody. Um, yeah, so I'm going to start straight away by just sharing my screen so that everybody can um, see the presentation. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Can I just get an indication? Okay, cool. Okay, so today we are going to look at um, the ISO standards, um, ISO standing for International Standards Organization. So we're looking at the objectives and the structures and we want to come in here with a very generalized view. Although you will see in some of the articles that I'm going to touch on, they are referring to the quality management system. Um, and that is because it's actually the strongest and the oldest um, ISO. Um, but um, I will also show you um, the, how the different ISOs link into each other and what the similarities is. And that actually, you can, um, that all ISOs works on the same principles. So um, that is just in a high level uh, explanation of what's going to, uh, what this, day, this um, webinar is going to be about. Um, I just quickly want to go through the, the guidelines, please, um, as Nico has requested, if you can just mute your um, microphones. Um, you can keep your video on if you want to. Um, for streaming purposes, it's usually better to, to switch the video or disable the video streaming part. Um, let myself just complete the presentation, please. You will see at the bottom of your uh, screen, there is a chat um, uh, uh, Function. If you click on that, you are welcome to put your questions throughout as you as these questions that you want to ask throughout the presentation. You can put it into the chat box, um, and between myself and Niku, we will address it in the Q and A session afterwards. Um, so we will have some time allocated, about ten minutes after the the webinar for for questions. Um, and then, as you see, have seen, Nico has recorded the um, webinar, and it will be uh, made available to everybody that is attending. Okay, our table of contents for this um, webinar. I'm going to quickly just give you um, an overview of who we, as Crest Advisory Africa, are. Um, integrated. Um, I'm going to then start talking about the integrated management system, objectives, and risk-based thinking. Then this, I'm going to go into an article with regards to seven ISO management principles. Um, and then we're going to look at the CAA website and endorsements, and we'll have then a, um, a Q&A session. So who is Crest Advisory Africa? So Crest Advisory Africa was established by Niku Sneiman, the founder and CEO, in June 2014. Um, and was registered as uh, in South Africa. Um, so Crest specializes in corporate governance and that includes, but it's not limited to enterprise risk management, uh, business continuity, compliance management, health and safety, and various others. Um, we are also a, a triple B E level two um, organization. Um, and we have various offerings that we are actually um, uh, 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 putting on the table. The first one being training. Um, we do not only ISO training, although that is a very big part of the training that we are providing. We also have soft skills, uh, competence and personal development training. So a lot of the, uh, different types of training that we are providing. Um, we do advisory services. Um, uh, uh, we work a lot in the banking and the, the mine and medical scheme industry, um, logistics, uh, warehousing, uh, trucking, and things like that. We are also um, auditors, so we can do audits, internal, external audits, uh, first, second, uh, and third party audits, uh, various different types of audits. Then we have products that's available, um, and we, we try to make it as uh, tailor-made for an organization that wants to um, procure our, our, our uh, products. And we, for instance, we have toolkits for the ISOs available. Um, and again, we also um, have a service um, on the toolkits to say, how can we help you implement those, those toolkits in your organization? Then we have tech technology. I don't know, some of you might have attended our previous webinars where we actually spoke about um, our flagship software, which is Isolytics. 
Um, Again, if you, if you go into our system, there's a direct link into the Isolytics web, website where you can get all the information about that or you're welcome to contact us with regards to the, the Isolytics. Um, just um, on a high level, um, it is also a, a system that we have um, uh, developed um, with a university, the, one of the leading universities in South Africa um, that actually assists with um, implementation uh, maintenance as well as um, auditing of management systems and out of that we actually grew the system into various directions. Um, then we're also looking at um, executive incubation where we have um, incubation programs that's running. We do um, events whether it is conferences, breakfast sessions, round tables, um, launch, launches for um, organizations, anything that, that can fall under that category. And then obviously international certification. Um, we can certify people, processes, uh, products, um, organizations, um, and ISO, um, uh, ISOs. Okay, so that in a, in a nutshell is what, what we do. Now we can actually go into what we are here for today um, and starting with in the integrated structure of management systems. So I want us to look at management systems as a, as a whole uh, and see how they are different and as well as how are they the same. So more and more organizations have to manage several compliance frameworks simul simultaneously. Um, and then to simple, simplify the, the work and to avoid co conflicts, um, it is actually very uh, much easier to, to actually integrate the various management system and because of everything that is so similar in, in most of the systems. So to rather have an integrated system than have um, loose standing systems that each has to be managed. So an integrated management system is a management system which integrates all the components of the business into one coherent system so as to enable the achievement of its purpose and mission. Whether it is a security management um, system, um, or quality management or health and safety or whatever the, the, it might be, how do we combine this and why can we combine this? So at this stage, I quickly want to go in and click, you, you know, I've got a little bit trouble with my screen sharing, so I'm going to click on the link. If it doesn't go in, just let me know that I can quickly share another screen here. Yeah? Mm. Can you see my screen? No, don't see it. Okay. You can't? No, I can't. I can just see okay. you. Cool. I'm going to just get, share another screen for you. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Yep. Cool. Okay. So I quickly want to talk around the, the PCB IMS2. Um, Uh, methodology. Um, so this is the Professional Evaluation Certification Board, which we are a, um, a platinum partner of. Um, and this is a very, very nice methodology and it's actually linked into all the ISOs. So I'm going to talk about um, uh, through this um, presentation or this document with you. And we will also make this document available on the website so you can actually download it afterwards. Okay, so um, if I start by looking at the integrated management system over overview, just to um, make sure that you understand that you can actually have more than one management system, but you can actually manage it as an integrated management system because of the similarities between the, the um, management systems. Um, and this is a very interesting table. Um, it actually takes different um, ISOs, as you can see here at the top, um, ISO 9001, 14,000, 27,000, 22301, and so forth. Um, and it looks at the different clauses. Um, so they look at objectives and many of the management system, and then to see in what clause in that ISO you will find that specific um, um, heading. Um, if you look at 9001, you will see right through in all the ISOs, it is clause 6.2. If we look at policy of the management, management system, in all the ISOs, it is clause 5.2. Only in this um, 22301, 
which is a very new ISO. Um, uh, well, actually, they have actually changed it. This is, this is the 2012. There is a new one that came out last year. So they have moved to making sure that it all falls under the same clause. Leadership and commitment, either 5.1 or 5.2. And as I said, that has been amended. Um, looking at document, documented information, clause 7.5, internal audit 9.2, uh, continual improvement uh, 10.3 or 10.2, you will see there it's always in clause 10. And then management review always in clause 9.3. So as you can see there, all the same subjects are being addressed in all the ISOs. So that, uh, that is why we can actually integrate all of these. Um, and then they are looking at the um, a, 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 a methodology that they call the PDCA methodology, um, which is based, and, and I'm sure all of you have heard of it, talking about plan, do, check, act. Um, and this um, uh, graphical uh, uh, picture here um, actually details it, it, it very nicely. So they can actually change the wording at the top to say plan, do, check, act. So you will have your first phases, which will be broken down into smaller steps, which will be broken down into activities, and then going into undefined tasks, which you can then define further. Um, they have the, I, I just quickly want to go to the, um, the PDCA model here. Um, and then, and, and again, the only parts that there might be some um, differences between the ISOs usually is in this do part. Um, which um, is more your, your um, operations part. So in, in security operations management, you will have, for instance, incident management, where in uh, uh, 22301, you might have testing and, uh, um, and things like that. So this is now a general PDCA model that they have here. So under the planning part, you will see they are talking there about in initiating the management system, understanding the organization, analyzing the existing systems, then leadership approval of the management system, the scope policy, assessments, and then statement of applicability. Um, and this will be exactly the same in all your ISOs. Maybe here and there it, it might swap around, but it should be 99% the same. So under the do, looking at the organizational structure, document management, design of procedures, communication, awareness and training, and operations management, and whatever that might be in that specific ISO that you are working with. Um, under check, always monitoring and measuring, um, internal audit and management review. And then finally, under the ACT part, you will always get the treatment of the non-conformities and then continual improvement. Again, forming a, a circle. So you actually have to start and go through everything to, continues, to ensure continuous improvement throughout your life cycle. So, and there you will see they have put it into a circle to say where you start with plan, do, check, act, act. Um, so, um, and I, I'm not going to go into each and every heading um, as a, um, the detail because then we can sit here till next week. Um, so I'm not going to, to go into specific details. So in this document, you will see it's set out very, very nicely, talking to each point and, and summarizing it uh, um, short and sweet, but also giving you a little bit more information. Uh, okay. I just quickly want to see here. And this is also just to show you that you can actually link all these different ISOs. And it, there's no sequence to say you have to have um, 9001 and then the next one is 31,000 and the next one is 22301 or whatever the case may be. Depending on what your organization decide, all of these can be clustered together and integrated into one integrated management system. Okay, so um, I'm going to quickly just go back to my. Um, slideshow. I'm sorry I'm jumping around like that, but um, there's something wrong with my screen sharing and um, we will have the technical guys sort it out for me as soon as possible. Okay. Um, just quickly go there. 
Okay, so um, what is objectives, uh, risks, risk-based thinking? Um, so the first question obviously is what is a risk? And if you understand and know ISOs, you will know that a, a risk is defined in all the ISOs as the effect of uncertainty on objectives and specifically looking at ISO 31000, which is the risk management ISO. Um, then what is objectives? Um, you will see all, right through all the ISOs, they will always say um, so that you have to ensure that your objectives of your organization is aligned with the ISO objectives. Um, so objective is something that you plan to do or to achieve. Um, and then you get different types of objectives. You get strategic objective, tactical objectives, operational objectives. Um, so depending on what level. And then what is risk-based thinking? So risk-based thinking means that companies have to perform evaluations and analysis to be used in decision making. Uh, management system auditors demands, also demands the alignment of a company's objective with its risk uh, register, and that is exactly what we discussed now um, in the, the IMS2 methodology or the PDCA that we've spoken about in the slides uh, previous. And then we get to the um, seven ISO management pr principles. And you will get, see these in all the ISOs. Um, starting at the top here with leadership, um, engagement of people, uh, process approach, improvement, evidence-based decision-making. I want to actually say evidence and risk-based decision-making, relationship management, and then customer focus. And um, I'm going to quickly go into another article that I want to work through with you. It's an article from the ISO themselves. Um, it is very well written. And as Nicole always say, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Again, we will give the, we'll, we'll put this article on our website that you can have access to it and can download it. Um, they have it in a different little bit. They're starting with customer focus here. And also they, they also mention in the article that it's not uh, in a specific uh, uh, um, prioritized format. So just so that you know, if I go into that article, let me quickly just open that article for you. Okay, so um, it is a, yes. We can see it. Good, <laughs> thank you. So the article is about quality management. So they actually took one ISO and they um, spoke about the seven um, principles um, in line with one specific ISO. Um, and again, using quality management, which is the, the, um, the oldest and, and actually um, strongest ISO of, of them all. So um, I just want to just tell you that if you, wherever you see quality management, you can actually replace it with any management system. So let's quickly run down. Um, so there's the, um, the seven principles that we're going to talk about. Focus, customer focus, leadership, engagement of people, process approach, improvement, evidence-based uh, um, decision making, and then relationship management. Going into the first principle that they have on their list is customer focus. And what's very nice about this article, it actually breaks it down to say, what do we mean if we say customer focus? Um, so the primary focus of, of a management system is to meet the customer's requirements and to strive to exceed customer expectations. Then what's the rationale behind this? Um, it's to sustain success. Um, our sustained success is achieved when an organization attracts and retains the confidence of customers and other independent parties. So how do we make sure that our customers are um, confident and, have, uh, and that can, they can trust us and we can trust them? So the benefits of being customer focused is to increase customer value, increase customer satisfaction, improve customer loyalty, enhance repeat business, um, enhance reputation, of the organization, expand customer base, and then increase revenue and market share. And I think in the where we currently um, are with the COVID-19 situation, and that is very important that we look after our customers. 
So actions that you can take, and again, not limited to this, depending on your organization, to recognize direct and indirect customers, to understand customers' current and future needs and expectations, to link the organization's objectives to your customers' needs and expectations, um, to communicate um, uh, uh, the needs and uh, the customers' needs and expectations. So communication always, you will see right through all the ISOs, they talk a lot about communication, very important. Plan, design, develop, produce, and deliver, and support goods and services um, according to your customers' needs and uh, expectations. Measure and monitor uh, the satisfaction levels. Um, this is where surveys comes in, very important, or important as well. Determine um, and take action, and then actively manage relationships. How do you actively uh, or, uh, are you? How do you, how are you actively part of your customer relationship? Then the next one, which, which for, for me in all the ISO actually is, is a very central part of all the ISOs is the leadership. So leadership at all levels uh, establish unity and purpose and direction. What is the tone at the top? Uh, extremely important. What is the rationale about having um, a leadership? So creation of unity and purpose, as well as direction um, um, and um, Engagement of people enable an organization to align its strategies, policies, processes, um, and resources to achieve its objectives. Again, coming down to, to achieving the objectives. So the key benefits of, of good leadership um, is increased effective, uh, effectiveness and efficiency, better uh, coordination, improved communication between all the different levels and functions in your organization, development and improvement of capabilities of the organization to deliver um, desired results. And then some actions communicate, to communicate organization's mission and vision strategies and policies with, throughout the organization with, um, at various levels. So it creates sustained uh, and sustain uh, shared values and fairness and ethical models of behavior, establish a culture of trust and integrity, and, um, encourage an organization-wide um, commitment of, uh, to quality, or um, in this case, uh, uh, where they are talking about quality management, um, ensure leaders at all levels are positive, um, and positive examples for the other people in the organization, provide people um, with the required resources, training, um, and authority um, uh, to act with accountability and then inspire, inspire, encourage, and recognize people. Um, and that also comes back to your people management skills. Engagement of people, very interesting that they are doing these two quite close to each other. Um, so. Uh, so this, this statement there is competent, empowered, and engaged people um, at, at all levels throughout the organization um, are essential to enhance its capability to create and deliver value and as well as reaching up, um, objectives. The rationale behind, behind that is to manage an organization effectively and efficiently. Um, it is important to involve all people at all levels and to respect them as individuals. So what is the key benefits of doing this? There's an improved understanding throughout the organization at all levels, all functions, enhanced involvement of people, enhanced to personal development initiatives and creativity, enhanced people satisfaction, trust, collaboration, um, and then incre increased attention to shared values. So how can we do this? By communication, again, coming out very strongly. So communicate with people to promise understanding um, of the importance of the individual um, contributions, uh, promote collaboration, facilitate dis and um, open discuss discussions and sharing of knowledge and, in and information as well as experience, empower people to determine constraints um, and to perform and uh, constraints to performance and to take initiatives um, without fear. Recognize and acknowledge, enable self-evaluation of performance and then conduct surveys. 
understand and know what you what your your um, your people are saying. Are um, are they feeling engaged? Are they feeling part? Are they feeling trusted and recognized? Um, then they're looking at a, a process approach. The statement is consistent and predictable results are achieved more effectively and efficiently when activities are understood and managed as interrelated processes that function as coherent systems. So how do our processes work together so that they can ultimately assist the organization to reach its ob objectives? The rationale is the quality management system consists of interrelated processes, understanding how results are produced by the system enables an organization to optimize the system and its performance. The benefits is enhanced ability to focus effort on key processes, uh, consistent and predictable outcomes, optimized performance, uh, it provides confidence and interest, uh, uh, confidence to interested parties um, as to its consistency, effectiveness, and efficiency. Um, and that is, again, coming back to what is your relationship with your interested parties and how do you share that with them? Um, actions to be taken. Uh, define objectives. Very important, as we spoke just earlier about understanding also what the objectives is and how do we define it. So understand, uh, define the objectives of the system and processes necessary to achieve them. Um, establish authority, responsibility, and accountability um, for those managing processes. Understand the organization's capabilities and determine resources, resource constraints prior to the action. Determine process independencies and analyze the effect of modification. Um, and looking at analyzing, again, coming back to risk-based approach, um, manage processes and their interrelations um, as, a, uh, as a system to achieve the organization's quality objectives. Ensure the necessary information is available and then manage risk uh, that can affect outputs. Improvement, um, and this comes back to that circle that we were talking about when we spoke about the, the PDCA. So how do we continuously improve the management system? So successful organizations have an ongoing focus on improvement, continual improvement. Rationale is improvement is essential for an organization to maintain current levels of performance, to react to change, um, in its internal and external conditions and to create new opportunities. And also, how do you know your organization internally and externally? And what um, triggers do you have that can inform you when there was changes in your internal and external environment that will affect and that will need you to look at improvement? So the key benefits is improved process performance, organization capabilities, um, and customer satisfaction, enhanced focus on root cause investigation. So understand what was the root cause and how do we correct it? Um, enhance ability to anticipate and react, enhance consideration um, of both incremental and breakthrough um, improvement, and then improve use of learning uh, for, of, for improvement um, and uh, enhanced drive for innovation. How do we learn from that and how do we ensure that we innovate and we um, make sure that we are continuously improving our system? So how can we do that? Actions to be taken to promote establish, um, establishment of improved objectives at all levels, um, educate and train people, ensure people are competent, they have the, the right resources, develop and deploy processes to implement improvement projects, um, track, review, and audit the planning. So again, making sure that you do continual improvement, always going back to see if you can make it better. Um, integrate improvement considerations and then recognize and, um, and acknowledge improvement. Then principle number six, evidence-based decision-making. So decisions based 
on the analysis and evaluation of data and information are more likely to produce desired results. And this is why we also say it's evidence and risk-based. Because as, um, as soon as you've done your evaluation and um, analysis, um, you are also more aware of what your um, risks are. So the rationale there is decision-making can be com a complex process. It always involves some uncertainty. It involves multiple types of um, sources of inputs, as well as their interpretation, um, which can be subjective. Um, so it's important to understand the cause and effect relationship um, and potential unintended consequences. Facts, evidence, um, and data analysis lead to greater objectivity. So the more information you have, the more evidence you have, the, more, the better you can make a decision. So the benefits is improved decision making, improved assessment of process performance, improved operational effectiveness and efficiency, improved ability to review, um, challenge and change opinions and decisions, um, increased ability to demonstrate the effectiveness um, of past decisions, and even if you could learn by, from past decisions to bring that in as well. So actions to be taken is to determine, measure and monitor key indicators to demonstrate the organization's performance, make all data needed available, ensure that data and information are sufficiently accurate, reliable and secure. Um, analyze and evaluate um, suitable by using suitable methods and then also to understand what methods are available to use um, to analyze and evaluate different types of data. To ensure people um, are comp uh, competent to analyze and evaluate, make sure that the people are trained, providing them with training, um, and then make decisions and take actions based on evidence balanced with experience and intuition. And then the last um, principle that they are discussing here, discussing here is relationship management. Um, so for sustained success, an organization manages its relationship with interested parties, such as suppliers. Um, interested parties influence the performance of an organization. So you also need to understand what is the expectations and the needs of your interested parties. Uh, manage manage um, organizations manages relationships with all of its interested parties to optimize the impact on the, on the uh, performance. So you also need to understand how, what their needs and expectations is, but also how do they impact your organization. So the key benefits of having good relationships with your interested parties is enhanced performance, common understanding of the goals and the values, um, increased capability to create value and a well-managed supply chain that provides a, uh, a stable flow of goods and services. So what actions can be taken? Determine relevant interested part, uh, who they are and analyze those interested parties to understand what are their expectations and their needs and how do they impact your organization? Determine and prioritize um, the relationship with those interested parties establish a relationship that balance short-term gains um, with long-term constraints, pool and share information, expertise, resources, etc. cetera, um, measure performance and provide performance feedback to interested parties. And it's uh, very important that you, you understand that there is a two-way communication there, that you have to get something as well as give something. Um, establish collaborative development and improvement activities and encourage and recognize improvements and achievements by suppliers and partners. So that is um, the seven principles uh, according to ISO, and you will find those seven principles in all your, um, uh, your ISOs, and, and that is why it's so extremely important. Then I quickly just want to, um, Okay, so I'll just quickly want to talk about, oh, let me just go back here, yeah, I've just, uh, talk about our endorsements, um, and, um, and I'll just quickly want to talk about the, the, uh, the PECB specifically here, you will see here in the middle, 
because we are a platinum partner of the, the professional evaluation certification body. Um, uh, and or being a platinum uh, partner there, we also um, have on these, we've been granted now access to the, the store where we also have our, our isolytic system available on the store. So if you need um, any information further on that, we can also give that to you. Um, I just quickly want to give you here, there is our, um, our website address. So please visit our website, uh, especially in our media room, you will find copies of our previous webinars and the recordings um, will be on the, uh, the website I, um, in the media room. There's various articles that's very interesting, interesting that um, you can download from there. There's brochures, podcasts, um, and um, the, as I said earlier, also links to our isolated system. So please go and visit our um, website. Um, and is there any questions from any one of you? Leon, I haven't received any, so um, the floor is open. Anybody, please ask questions. Anything that you that you want to have regarding the webinar that was held now? Any questions to Leon or to me regarding ISO, the objectives, the structures, uh, the PDCA, or anything that you that you need there? Going once, I see that Sergio Husson has got a PDCA um, logo there. That's beautiful, Sergio. Very nice. So Deming has played a big influence in your life. Like that. Okay, Cory, no questions. Ben? I'm good, thanks. Okay, thank you, Cory. Right. Um, I just want to uh, to inform you that um, tomorrow um, so some of you were not uh, invited last week or you were actually part of this this process uh, for today but tomorrow at one o'clock we've got uh, our systems um, uh, sorry our system is isolytics um, so, so you can go to isolytics.com and uh, you will see that we've got a value-added reseller um, program at one o'clock tomorrow afternoon that we will have a webinar on. And then we, we have, uh, th that, will, that will be on every, every, um, every Wednesday. And then we are going to have um, Monday, um, Tuesdays, etc. cetera. Um, at three o'clock, we'll, we will be having a certain section out of, out of the, the ISOs. Um, what kind of information can we actually put to you and actually drill into? Um, one of the questions, or one of the, the areas where Elian has actually um, spoken about is your suppliers or your external environment. How do you conduct a risk assessment on your, on your external environment? And we have got a fantastic um, tool that is actually assisting you with that. Um, it is also built into our aesthetics um, that you can actually see what is your vendor status, the priorities there as well, what, what is, what is your, um, your suppliers um, and your partnerships that you've got and how can you determ determine that and as well as how can you measure that. So um, that is, that, that's, that's a good one there. The second one is actually surveys. Surveys um, um, going through um, the seven principles um, of ISO. Surveys is, is, is about in every principle there. Um, feedback about leadership, feedback from your clients feedback from your suppliers, feedback from everywhere. And if you don't have a, um, I've been working, working a lot with, with, um, with civil aviation authorities and as Elian has indicated they uh, with medical schemes, et cetera. And, and the biggest thing that people are, are actually missing is, um, is to automate your surveys, that your surveys can actually uh, be broader and be sent to everybody, that you've got a 360 degree um, evaluation actually of of the um, of your service, and that you can, um, as so, sorry, as as a man management system auditor, myself and Andy Lian, it is very important that you are looking at your risks. Sorry, your objectives firstly, then your risks that is actually affecting 
the achievement of your objectives. And, and, and if that is leadership, you need to have um, feedback from even the lower staff to say that what do they feel about management? Even your suppliers, if, if you are treating a, a supplier, and guys, I, I think if you are suppliers, you would know we've been in the market now, now since, um, since 2014. And during this time, we have got fantastic um, clients. But on the other hand, we've, we, have, we have also got bad clients that we are walking away from, um, from, from contracts that we are walking away from because of ethical, uh, the ethical environment or the conduciveness of, of that environment is not, is not, is not according to, to our value structure. So we are making a decision even after um, a contract has been, has been awarded the moment that people are actually breaching our value system, we are walking away from it. We've got a luxury actually in doing that, but that is actually giving you a correct understanding as a business of what do the external people think of you, whether you are paying them on time, whether you are treating them right, or do you just see them as, as paid labor? And um, I think any one of you that is here, none of us are paid labor. We are experts in our environment and we need to be treated as experts. And um, with a customer and client a relationship there, you need to, to also feel that I, as the, the supplier of a service to you that is actually contributing to your objectives, that is limiting the risks on your objectives, that you are actually making a difference in that environment. You will, if you, if you follow us, um, you will see that, that, that I have written a, um, an article. Um, it is under the media room. I've written an article, Success Breeds Success. It is part of our incubation program. Um, please go, go to it, read it. If you can, um, I, will, I, will, I will actually try and, and, and get it quickly for us um, on, on the, is it? So um, that, that you can actually see what kind of difference are we making in, in people's lives. And um, this, the article, it is in your chat. So if you, sorry, I need to go to, to everyone here, sorry. Um, there's it in your chat, just copy it and go and read it. We have made a huge different difference in people's lives. Uh, just, to, just to mention too, that I, just, that I have to go and write up. Um, we have started with an incubation program is specifically on quality and quality management and leadership, etc. And this, this company has just started out. They've got a good legacy, but they just started out. They don't have contracts as yet. Based on their involvement in our incubation program, they got a contract that, that, that is going to be for three years that is actually paying, paying everything. So that's fantastic. The second one is I was busy with an audit in Tanzania, um, in Ethiopia. Um, three months ago, and while I was I was I was there as an auditor, not doing anything else, I was just auditing. Um, USAID uh, walked into the offices of of the um, the company, and they were asking questions: um, Who is that, and who is this, and can you do this, etc. And when they when when they realized that I am actually auditing a specific management system that is that's actually specifically. Um, uh, or, or that is actually scarce, it, it was actually the first PECB management system audit that was conducted in the world. And I was lucky to have been doing that. So based on that, that company got a contract of 3.4 million US dollars over the next three to four years. That is business incubation. And that is, that is what ISO is about. ISO is not about a compliance audit. That is the least that it should be about. It should not be about compliance. It should be about driving your business and making a return on investment that the cost of and the implementation of an, an ISO standard, uh, whether it is business continuity, et cetera, is outweighing everything that, that you are actually putting down on the table. That is actually the power of ISO. And you can, I think you can, you can see myself and Elian, we've got, we've got passion for um, international standards. I, I um, to be honest, um, I, 10 years, 
ago, if, if I'm looking at myself before 2007, I would never have thought that I was going into, into the ISO space. I've got my MBA, I was specializing in total quality management with the Deming model, and I was content. And um, with our exposure, myself and Ilian, we, we were working on one of the biggest projects globally at, at the time between 2007 and 2011. And uh, um, ISO and the international language, working with cross-cultural people and cross-dimensional disciplines, etc., was so fantastic. And when we when we adopted, it was like wow, we 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 have we have actually broken through all the barriers that we that we could have done from engineers to an operator, from contracts managers to CEOs. It was a universal language that we have implemented. And that is the power of making a management system, making it part and parcel of what you've got, um, and actually of your toolbox. Because your management system toolbox, if you looked at what, what Lien has, um, had, has demonstrated in that IMS2 um, methodology, that is fantastic. Because there's actually 19 or 20 building blocks in every international standard. Those 19 or 20, if you know them, you are always on your due north. Your true north needs to be the PDCA and that 19, um, 19 building blocks that you've got there. That is, that is what you need to have. And if, you, if you've got that, um, I was thinking of interviews that, that I was having to appoint people. And if I knew now, what I knew then, uh, sorry, if I knew then what I, what I know now, I would have asked them the PDCA. Sergio, fantastic. I would ask them the PDCA questions. What is under planning? What is under operations? What is under, under checking? What is under your corrections or, or acting and your corrections? And hell man, that is straightforward. Most of the people are just concentrating on operational management and operational risk, and they cannot see past the ceiling that they have created for themselves. And this is why we're doing these webinars, to, to actually show people that you can think further than just what you're seeing here with the ceiling that is a meter and a half or two and a half meters high. It is a six-story building, but you just see two and a half meters. Go, in, go outside and, and look bigger, look higher. So this is what we, what we want to do. We want to create passion um, in this space. And with the PCB, what we have got this week was actually that we as a, a platinum partner, we have got permission to actually give online training just like this. So we can sit where you are, where I am, and we can do that. The, the assessment can be done afterwards. Uh, it doesn't matter. Secondly, we can also do virtual, um, virtual, virtual man management, man management system audits because we've got a system that can actually do it and self auditing as well. We can, so we have been, and we are one of the, one of the few companies that has been uh, given the privilege to be doing this. So I want us to, to ask you again, any questions, any questions that you want to ask? Going once. <laughs> can we end? I want to thank everybody. Thank you, Ilian, for your time your you. and everything. And I, um, we hope to see you tomorrow afternoon at one o'clock. So um, if, you, if you don't have the, the, um, the link, uh, just on, on, your, on your chat, you will get. My email address, sorry, there's advisoryafrica.com advisorafrica.com. You can contact me and we will assist you with it. Thanks a lot and have a fantastic and safe day and week. Thanks. Bye. Bye.